to be held this Saturday, December 23rd, live from Kingdom Arena in Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This great event is being presented by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions for Riyadh Season and National Events Center in association with the General Entertainment Authority, Gold Star Promotions, and Sella. Let's first welcome Nisa Sauerland of Wasserman Boxing. And now let's welcome Lyndon King Arthur. And now let's welcome Dimitri Beeble's manager, Thadden Tornelov. <laughs> let's now welcome Dimitri Beeble. And now let's welcome up Salida Promotions, Mr. Dimitri Salida. Let's welcome Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Let's now welcome Triple D, Daniel Dynamite Dubois. Let's welcome Otto All In. Valen. That's it. Let's welcome Joseph Parker. Let's welcome the manager of Deontay Wilder, Mr. Shelley Finkel. <laughs> Let's now welcome Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. Oh, 
let's welcome the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder! Stay ready. <laughs> Let's welcome AJ Anthony Joshua. Let's welcome International Boxing Hall of Fame promoter, Mr. Frank Warren of Queensberry Promotions. We now hand things over to our host, Mr. Deb Sunny. Thank you very much, Thomas Triber. Uh, some brilliant introductions, some brilliant ring walk music there as well. Some very, very appropriate. Uh, thank you for sticking with us, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think you were going to go anywhere, to be honest, with what we've got coming up. This is part two of today's iconic, historic, landmark press conference ahead of an incredible, maybe the best ever boxing event put on this Saturday night in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The day of reckoning is now just hours and hours away. We've heard from some of the fighters involved and now we're going to hear from a few more, including our co-main events, including a mouth-watering heavyweight fight and including a WBA light heavyweight world title fight. Well, this historic fight card is presented to fans worldwide by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions for Riyadh Season and the National Events Centre in association with the General Entertainment Authority, Gold Star Promotions and Seller. On behalf of Queensbury, we would like to again just express what a, what a privilege it is to be working on this historic fight card as we continue this year's Riyadh Season. And at this point, we just want to express our, our heartfelt thanks to his royal, his royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And of course, to His Excellency, the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Turkey Al Sheikh. A big thanks to all of the teams at the GEA, Riyadh Season and Seller as we continue to work together to deliver unbelievable events here in the kingdom. Now, this event is available on DAZN pay-per-view worldwide, TNT Sports Box Office in the UK and Ireland, and ESPN Plus pay-per-view in the US. Now, before we begin, before we hear from everyone at this top table, we should take a moment to just talk about our brilliant, fantastic hosts on Saturday night. Now, Riyadh season has become one of the most widely anticipated global events of the year. For the last four years, since 2019, we've seen nearly 40 million visitors from every corner of the globe welcome to this beautiful city. There's more than 12 zones, each offering unique experiences, live concerts, five-star dining, high-level sporting events, and really everything in between. There is something for everyone here in Riyadh. Back in October, on a night that will live long in the memory, it was boxing that had the privilege of kicking off Riyadh season with the battle of the baddest. It was Tyson Fury against Francis Ngannou, the king of heavyweight boxing against the king of MMA. It was an unforgettable night and one of the most talked about events in the history of sport. For those who have already been fortunate enough to visit Riyadh, you'll know that there is something very special in the Arabian air. And for those who haven't visited yet, well, what are you waiting for? You need to come and get involved. Uh, and this event on Saturday night is everything that Riyadh season is all about. It is well and truly big time. Let's begin once again by bringing in Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren. And Frank, I touched upon the uh, incredible battle of the baddest, Fury and Garnu, back in October. And it felt like that opened up an awful lot. And looking up at this top table, you must be pretty pleased with what's going on. I am. It's uh, this is this is history making. Certainly, as far as boxing's 
concerned. It's certainly the biggest event I've been involved with as regarding the amount of top quality fights on one card. And certainly we've got, as I mentioned earlier, we've got 10 of the top 15 heavyweight fighters in the world on this card, uh, plus two other champions defending their titles. And this is, is, this is definitely something extra special. And uh, I'm going to repeat myself from earlier. I also want to thank His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, His Excellency Turkey al Sheikh, for making the event possible in this Riyadh season and all his staff who have worked very closely with Queensbury, uh, with General Entertainment Authority of Saudi Arabia, Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotion, Seller, and all the promoters here, my fellow promoters that I, I will mention again earlier, Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing, 258, AJ Boxing, Shelley Finkel, Top Ranks, Salisa Promotions, Wasserman Boxing, and SES Boxing. I've never said anything like that before. That's what shows what this is all about. Everybody cooperating to deliver. And we have, between all of us, delivered something extra, extra special. This is a boxing feast for the fans. And I'm going to tell you, it will blow your mind on Saturday night. All of these guys are putting it on the line. All of them. They all want to be back here, as I said in the last press conference. They want to be back here in the new year. And for the winners, it's going to get bigger and bigger and better and better. And it's going to set some great fights up for the boxing fans around the world. And just on these fights, it feels like, Frank, some of these fights could really change the landscape of boxing right now with the results and the way they could potentially go. High, high level fights, high jeopardy. Well, it goes without saying, you know, you look at the, the uh, joint main events, two main events, you've got AJ from Britain, you know, he's, uh, he's in a tough fight. He's in, in with Otto Wallin, who's uh, only got one loss on his record, 26 wins. That loss was against Tyson Fury. He's coming off a very, very impressive win over Gassier from his last fight. Um, AJ, I'm sure, will be out to prove uh, that he's still at the top table. He's gonna put, I'm sure he's going to be looking to put, a, put in a fantastic performance. And Otto's going to be looking to upset, upset the odds on the apple cart. So I think that in itself is going to be a very, very intriguing and important fight. And then you look at Deontay. He's, uh, he's in with a, a real tough competitor in Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker... Um, won his last fight here on the very first show that we did at Riyadh season and done it in good style. Um, he's a fellow stable mate, trainer, I should say, of uh, training mate of Tyson Fury. So I'm sure he'll be asking for some tips from Tyson about what he should be doing. And Deontay, he's been out of the ring for two years. He's come back with one win, which was a hell of a win, a knock one round blowout of Hellenius. Um, again, Neither of these guys can afford to slip up. You know, Deontay, I'm sure, again, will want to be confirming his place at the top table. And Joseph Parker will be doing his best to upset the odds. They're great fights. They're intriguing fights. And who knows what the winners, where they go and what it will lead to. Thank you very much, Frank. We'll be coming back to you shortly. Well, the first fight that we're going to discuss is a tremendous world title fight between the unbeaten Russian Dmitry Bivol, putting his WBA light heavyweight title on the line against the, the IBO light heavyweight champion, Britain's Lyndon King Arthur. Now, this fight is brought to you in association with World of Boxing Promotions, Matchroom Boxing and Vassalman Boxing. Uh, I'm going to start by bringing in Eddie Hearn. Uh, Eddie, great to see you again. Um, it feels like Dmitry Bivol... Your guy, a, a, a man at the peak of his powers right now and a real chance to make a statement on Saturday. Yeah, thanks, Dev. And uh, just, just to echo what Frank said, really, the excitement building into this card. It was four years ago we first came to Riyadh and the change that we've seen here has been incredible. Um, I'm not sure, like Frank said, we've ever seen a card put together like this before and particularly the speed in which it was delivered. So many great fights of course, the heavyweight fights, but so many great opportunities for other fighters in different weight classes. When you talk about Dimitri Bivol, you talk about a pound-for-pound pound great fighter. Um, the victory over Canelo Alvarez that we promoted in Las Vegas on, uh, in the T-Mobile Arena was incredible. It was a masterclass, cemented his position on the pound-for-pound pound list. And I'm delighted that Lyndon Arthur gets the opportunity. You know, a great lad, British fighter, um, great team with Pat Barrett and everybody in Manchester. And you know that he's going to come to win on Saturday, but he has a very tough task ahead of him against, I believe, the number one light heavyweight in the world. And have you struggled to find willing opponents for what you believe is the number one light heavyweight in the world? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we've, we've offered the fight to a number of British fighters, Joshua Boatsy, Dan Aziz, and finally we found one to step up 
in Lyndon Arthur. You know, we've got a good team with Nissa and Keller at Wasserman Boxing as well. And, you know, great to have them involved and so many promoters. And, you know, you've got to chase, chase greatness. Lyndon Arthur has an opportunity to feature on the pound for pound list himself if he can dethrone Dimitri Bivol. Tough ass, but he's a quality fighter. This man to my right has been out of the ring for over a year, but ready to show everybody that he's the top dog on Saturday night. Well, let's bring in Vadim Kornilov from World of Boxing Promotions. Uh, and Vadim, Dimitri Bivol, your guy, has, uh, you know, you've been with him every step of the way. And now he is on this stage. He's already done so much, but it feels like this is perhaps a new chapter in the brilliant career of Dimitri Bivol. Tell us about it. Thank you, Vadim. Well, let's bring in from Team Lyndon Arthur from Bassman Boxing, Nisa Sowland. Uh, Nisa, you know, uh, a huge opportunity for your man here, Lyndon Arthur, a huge night. You must be delighted to secure this. Uh, very much so. Um, I think like Eddie said and Vadim said, a lot of people have been offered this fight, but my man on the right to me has taken the, the reins and he's decided to take the fight. Massive opportunity. If he wins on Saturday night, he's number one in the division. He calls the shots. We're not coming here to make up numbers. We're coming to win. And that is the aim on Saturday. And I think he'll do it. I think, call me crazy. I think he's going to do it. He's, he's bang up for it. And um, yeah, looking, looking very much forward to seeing it. Well, there's been all this talk. Uh, a round of applause for, for Nisa Sowland. Listen, there, there has been all this talk, Nisa, uh, about, the, uh, about the next fight, as, as does happen in boxing. People are linking uh, Dimitri Bivol to the winner of Baturbiev against Smith. People are talking about that fight. I mean, how does that sound to you when people are talking about that fight and perhaps overlooking your man, Lyndon Arthur? Yeah, I think that's it's a very dangerous thing to do. I think Vadim said it correctly. He said, he's a, he, well, he said it was a stepping stone, but he's not a stepping stone. He's someone that can't be overlooked. Um, Lyndon has top pedigree. He beat Yardi, obviously lost the rematch. But when he's up for a fight, Lyndon's up for a fight. And trust me, he's up for it on Saturday night. Um, you know, I, I, I'm very, very excited to see the performance. OK, thank you very much, Nisa Sal. And I'm just going to pause to see if anyone else is going to uh, applaud. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> There you go, Nisa Sowland. Uh, let's, uh, let's bring in the man sat next to him, Lyndon King Arthur. Very, very well attired today, Lyndon. I love what you've gone with today. Um, look, you're really taking this in this week, aren't you? Yeah, it's, you know, just for the culture and all that, I've, I've been telling everybody, yalla, 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 you know, getting used to it. But now I'm, I'm enjoying it and I'm looking forward to Saturday. Well, Lyndon, look, I've been following your story for a long time from the kid that was sat on the curb, pulled and picked up by Pat Barrett, dragged into the gym, convinced to go and change your life. Well, look around. You have changed your life. How does it feel to be right here on the grandest stage of them all? It's, 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 it's good, man. I'm, like you say, I'm taking it all in and I, and I kind of have changed my life a little bit with, with, with boxing and how far I've took it. Nobody probably would have thought I would take it this far if you asked them 10 years ago, but here I am. It's a huge task. Some people call him the number one light heavyweight in the world. Are you ready for this task? Yeah, I won't be here, obviously. What is it that you can do to upset Dimitri Bivol on Saturday night? We'll see you on Saturday. Very short, very concise answers, Lyndon Arthur. Um, do, you feel like the, uh, do you feel like the best is still yet to come from you, Lyndon? Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. I don't believe nobody's seen the best of me yet, but I feel like if, if a fight's going to do it, this one will be the one. OK, all right, we look forward to that. Let's bring in the WBA light heavyweight champion, Mr. Dimitri Bivol. Uh, Dimitri, I saw you out for Fury versus Ngannou. 
Another round of applause, why not? I saw you out for Fury versus Nganu in October. You look like you love Riyadh, and now you get the chance to fight here. How does that feel? And why is Lyndon Arthur the right fight for you right now? Why is this the right one? Uh, Dimitri, you're, you're still unbeaten, obviously, so many world title defences, but we haven't seen a knockout for a little while now. Do you think we can get a knockout on Saturday night? All right, thank you very much. We're looking forward to this on Saturday night. The WBA and the IBO, light heavyweight championships on the line. Dimitri Bivol and Lyndon Arthur. Now, the next fight that we're going to come to is a fight that has got a lot of people talking. These guys could not be more opposite in character, Daniel Dubois and Jarrell Miller, but they are united in one common goal on Saturday, and that's to knock each other out. Cannot wait for this fight. It is brought to you in association with... Salita Promotions and Miller Time Promotions. And Frank, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you in here. Uh, Daniel Dubois, just 18, 19 years old when he first joined the Queensbury Stable. You've been there every step of the way. Feels like a big one on Saturday night. It certainly is. Um, he's in a tough fight, there's no doubt about that. And he's just coming off a, a very tough fight against Usyk. Um, we all have our views on how that, the outcome of that. I felt that was a legitimate blow, but I'm not going to drive everybody mad about that. Um, but look, Daniel shows that he's got the power. I think he gave Usyk his toughest fight at heavyweight, and he certainly exposed, I think, uh, a weakness there in his around his middle. He, I don't, he struggles a bit taking sometimes shots to the body. And as I say, Daniel has power. But at the end of the fight, a lot of people questioned the way it ended. They questioned about his commitment. And this is a fight where he's got to get out there and he's got to show what he's all about. And that's the challenge for him. And he's up for the challenge. He's in a really good place at the moment. And he's in with an excellent fighter who's had his problems in the past. He's now got his license back, having paid for the problems that he incurred upon himself. Um, he's licensed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. This is... Uh, this is a good fight for him as well. You know, both these guys, I think, are, are at a level now where they need to put in a performance that's going to be really eye-catching, a performance that's going to move them on to the next level. I've got my views on who I feel will win, and that's why, Daniel, we put him into the fight. But I know that uh, Gerald's got his own opinion on that. But one thing's for sure, this fight has got, it is, on paper, a 50-50 fight. And... I think it's going to be 
probably the most competitive fight on the night. I may be wrong because there are some great fights on the card, but it's going to be a very, very competitive fight. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Frank. Let's bring in Dimitri Salita here. Uh, Dimitri, you've been banging the drum for Jarrell Miller for a little while now. You've talked about how he's got the skills and the personalities to really become a top, top heavyweight. But this feels like the toughest fight of his career. Do you agree with that? And do you agree with what Frank said? Uh, thank you so much. First of all, it's a great honor to be here. And I want to thank all the event organizers. Uh, this is a fantastic event. And uh, like Mr. Frank Warren said, this is a crossroads fight. And uh, Jarrell has all the ingredients, the skills, the personality to be a real force in the heavyweight division. And uh, Daniel Dubois on paper is Jarrell's toughest opponent, but I believe Jarrell is going to be explosive, impressive, and is going to put himself in position for big, big fights. So for you, this is a case of Jarrell Miller putting himself in the shop window for maybe some other guys up here. Definitely. I think that Jarrell, look at how much interest he's generated this week. There's not have been a lot of heavyweights from Brooklyn, New York, like Mike Tyson and Riddick Bowe, uh, who have the personality and the skills. And I believe with an impressive win, Jarrell puts himself in a picture with the big fights, with Tyson Fury, with Anthony Joshua, with Usyk, with Wilder, etc. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Now, I've, uh, I've been looking forward to this all week. I'm actually going to come to Daniel Dubois first, because I'm not sure he'd get a word in otherwise. So, Daniel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you in here. You've talked about how this guy here, Jarrell Miller, is the perfect opponent for you. Now, he is going to weigh 100 pounds more than you. He's going to be calling you names. He's going to be walking you down. Why is he the perfect guy for you to fight? Come here. Um, I only have a few things to say to Jarrell. Yo, big baby. Every baby has a daddy. I'm going to beat you like I'm your daddy. Hey! I don't know what card they prompt you to read that oh. on, but I'm happy you did it. A, B, C, D, <laughs> one, two, three. Daniel Dubois just lost his virginity. <laughs> Fuck out of <laughs> Daniel's arrived. Let's go. He's here. <laughs> Daniel, are you here to knock this guy out on Saturday night? I'm ready to see him in a ring. I'm not, I don't do too much talking, but I'm ready for it. Has he lit a fire in you, calling you all these names, putting up all these posts on social media, coming after you? Has he lit a fire in you? No, I'm ready to fight. I've got, I got the support behind me. Just show up. Show up. Let's bring in Jarrell Miller. Now, uh, it looks like you've, uh, you've changed Daniel Dubois this week. This is, this is a new guy here. He, it uh, sounds like he wants to do bad things to you on Saturday. Uh, Tell first, us what you're thinking. Before I roast him, I want to say, Alhamdulillah, um, you know, as a new, newly born Muslim, um, you know, I'm, I'm tired of roasting these guys all week, man. I'm exhausted. I'm just ready to punch them in the face already, you know? And I was like... Who am I to roast first? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give all the fighters grace. You know, I'm going to give AJ grace. And, you know, me and Deontay haven't said no words, so I'm going to give him grace. Old Tom, why everybody get him grace? But I feel like picking at some promoters, you know? You know, Eddie's my guy still, you know? And I always say, sometimes he can be a jackass or, you know, a little hypocrite. But, you know, he does pay well and he paid on time compared to the other dickhead that's on the side of the table. So, with that being said, you know, Eddie, you know I'm still a fan of you. But, um, Frank, Thank you, I'm a fan of you as well, too, even though you picked the wall, I'm going to cook his ass. Um, listen, man, Saturday night's going to be a fun night. You know, I'm excited to see the A.J. Wallen fight, the Deontay Parker fight. You know, it's not just about myself. I just feel like it's an awesome card to be on, the Bevo fight as well, too. I'm um, just tuning in Saturday night, man. I'm going to cook this shrimp, the two-time quitter. You know what I'm trying to say? Two-time quitter. ain't going to spank shit. Listen, listen, it, 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 it's, 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 it's so funny, you know, you know, after the Usyk fight, you know, I, I heard he finally got some vagina. So I'm happy for you. And I, and I applaud you that you know what the gushy gushy feel like. Well, I'm going to make your face mushy mushy come Saturday night. So all you guys, please tune in. And it's going to be amazing. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss it. Don't miss it. <laughs> Tremendous exchange. I'm almost lost for words. Look, Jerome, I can't let you go. I mean, you, you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to give everyone grace up here. Are you sure you haven't got anything else to say to any other rival heavyweights up here? No, 
I'm not saying reason why. I'm, I'm, I'm locked in now. You know, Monday was here. You know, we seen AJ and I seen Dubois already. Um, like I said, we all got our respectful tasks on Saturday. Uh, I'm locked in on Daniel Dubois right now. You know, the beef and all that stuff could happen again after the fight. Um, but I know I got your back, though. If anybody messages you, just let me know. You know, I'm getting a Brooklyn beat down for sure. I got you. <laughs> you cuzzed out now with me. You feel me? But, um... Nah, man, I'm just focused on Saturday night, man. Let's tune in, bro. I did enough talking. I done hyped the car as much as I can. Just buy the damn pay-per-view and watch an amazing night of boxing in Saudi. Let's go. Thank you so much, Jarrell. Thank you, Daniel. Brilliant, brilliant stuff here. Cannot wait for this fight on Saturday night. Uh, let's continue with one of our with one of our co-main events on Saturday. The hard-hitting former long-reigning WBC World Heavyweight Champion Deontay Wilder takes on the former WBO World Heavyweight Champion, a reignited Joseph Parker. Now, this fight to you is is brought to you in association with Bomb Squad. I'm first going to bring in Shelley Finkel, representative, of course, of Deontay Wilder for a long time. Uh, and Shelley, I know you're a man of few words. But this really is an important night for Deontay Wilder. I still only have a few words. Um, fact is, it's a great competitive fight. I like Joseph Parker as a person, but I think Deontay is just going to be too much for him. And you'll see it. And don't blink, as Deontay says, because it happens that fast. Thank you, Shelley Finkel. Well, I won't ask you too many more. I know you are a man of, of few words. Thank you for that. Let's bring in, <laughs> let's bring in Joseph Parker here. Uh, a very, very important fight for you in, in your career. You've talked about how this is the biggest fight of your career. You are now just hours away from taking on one of the biggest punches in the history of the sport. How are you feeling? Firstly, it's great to be back in Saudi Arabia. Thank you to His Excellency for the opportunity to fight on this card and this event. Thank you to the people of Saudi Arabia for being so welcoming to our team. Uh, Spencer Brown and Gypsy King, Andy Lee, George Lockhart and David Higgins. Thanks for all the hard work, Team Parker. I'm here and I'm ready. I've had a great camp. Uh, we're going into this fight, good game plan, great strategy. And listen, respect to all, but I'm here to do a job and I'm here to win. That's it. Listen, Joe, you're not going to get away with that. In your corner, you've got Andy Lee. You know, you've been going to Tyson Fury for advice as well. I've seen Tyson do a couple of interviews talking about it. What sort of benefit have you got from this camp where Deontay Wilder's looking in the opposite corner and he is seeing the same camp that actually inflicted his only defeats? Like I said, we have a great camp and the people involved. But when I go out there, I'm going to, I'm going to put on a great display. All right, well, let's bring in Deontay Wilder here. Uh, Deontay, uh, a really uh, a monumental moment in your career so far. It's your Saudi Arabia debut. I know you've been looking forward to this one. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been an amazing time. It's been, this is my second time here. And um, just the love and the support that I've been getting from all the people here, it's, it's just been amazing. And just to be a part of this card is, uh, it's with so many great fighters. This is a one-of-a-kind card uh, with so many uh, great fighters on one card, heavyweights. And this is what we, we like to see. Everyone loves to see heavyweights, and they love to see knockouts. And uh, they got the right man on the card for this job. And I'm definitely coming to do what I do best. You know, it's something that, that's, that's God-given. It's something that I don't have to, to pressure myself to do or, or, or others apply pressure on to me. It's something that comes naturally, and um, I'm coming to do it again um, this time around as well. So... Like Shelly told you, like I always say, don't blink, baby. Bam, good night. Deontay, with this fight, it's a, it's a fight that was talked about a few years ago when he had the WBO title. Of course, you had the WBC title. I've seen you talk about it, and I've seen you actually say that you think Joseph Parker ran from you, and you're going to take it out on him for running from you. Um, Tell us a little bit more about that. You really think he didn't want to fight you once upon a time? Yeah, I, I, I truly believe he ran from me, you know, I've heard that he said that uh, he's confident that he's gonna gonna knock me out, but I, I, I kind of hard that find to be, uh, hard to believe because uh, how how can you have confidence in yourself as a challenger and you didn't have confidence in yourself as a champion? It's kind of backwards to me, but uh, whatever flows his boat, we'll see what happens on Saturday night. I, I can't wait to look. I'm looking forward to sharing the ring with him and may the best man win. 
Joseph, have you been running from Deontay Wilder? I don't run from anyone, Dev. As you can see, I fight the best in the world. Every time. Well, this is the thing about you, Joseph. I was actually going to raise this. You are the guy that seems to say yes to everyone. I mean, no one really was queuing up to fight Joe Joyce. Do you still consider this guy to be the hardest test of your entire career? And do you feel you can knock him out on Saturday? Of course. This is a tough test, tough test, but I know I can knock him out 100%. And Tyson Fury has said, all you've got to do is keep out of the way of the right hand. Is that, is that, is that it? Is that the plan? Correct. That's what I'm going to do. Deontay, there's, there's more to Deontay Wilder than just a right hand, right? What's that? There is more to Deontay Wilder than just a right hand, though, right? We're going to find out Saturday night, you know. Um, I'm good that he's getting advice. I hope he take it all in because when he wake up, he's going to be like, damn, they lied to me. <laughs> good one, good one. <laughs> Joseph, I want, to, um, I want to read you a quote which I have seen from Deontay Wilder. Something he said which I thought, okay, he's, he's gone in a little bit here. He said, I want to knock him out of the ring. I've never knocked a man out of the ring. I want to knock him out of the ring and I don't want nobody to hold him up when he falls. I want him to fall straight on the floor and on the ground with his arm folded out, looking up into the sky. These are words that have left the mouth of Deontay Wilder. Now, hearing that, that sounds like quite a brutal warning. What, is, what goes through your mind when you hear that? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Deontay, uh, anything to say to that? I mean, these words did leave your mouth. It sounds like you're, you're coming here with bad intentions. Well, you know, I, I come to do what I, I do best, you know. Um, that's a site to get the fans what they want to see, you know. At the end of the day, no one wants to see a 12-round fight. It, it, it's a whole bunch of heavyweights up here, and we're the hard hitters. And um, at the end of the day, people have things to do. And uh, they want to come and see a fight, and after that, they want to go party. So when you're watching me, like I said, don't blink. I'm going to give you what you want to see. And uh, my, nowadays, my name is called Dr. Sleep. And um, I definitely got the night quill in the right hand, so I hope you bring a pillow and a blanket. It get a little chilly at night. Thank you, Deontay. Just, uh, Joseph, do you, I mean, do you intend on bringing a pillow? Are you taking Everybody his advice? Personally raps now, boy. Yeah, don't ask me silly questions. A stupid question. On to the next one. <laughs> there will be no pillow on Saturday. Look, Deontay, I just want to come back to you. Obviously, you've got this fight, but we can't ignore all the rumours that are out there in, in the marketplace. Um, you talk about how, obviously, you always focus on your next fight, but you do like to window shop. Now, when you look through this window over here, I can see Anthony Joshua over here. What do you see when you look through this window? Um, honestly, I see a man that's, that's, that's been focusing uh, and, and, and uh, you know, focus on his, what the task that lies at hand, you know. Um, I say Miss I, but... You know, I, I'm not in his head, so I can't speak for himself, you know. A lot of people have asked me about his mannerism, the way he's been, his demeanor about, him, about himself, the way he's been reacting to the media, you know, the questions that when it comes about me, you know. I can't speak for him, you know. We, 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 we're on the outside looking in, and, and uh, we'll see, you know. He, he has a, a, a task to, a big task to complete as well. I have one as well, so... When it's all over with, we can, we can talk about it. But at this moment in time, it's, uh, it's getting close to the fight, and uh, I think we're both focused on the, on the same task, and that's the win. Um, and uh, I'll leave it as that. Thank you very much, Deontay. Thank you very much, Joseph Parker, as well. Well, let's keep things moving. Let's speak about the brilliant co-main event, the former two-time unified world heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua, returns and takes on a, a highly rated, highly ranked Swede, of course, the one and only Otto Valin. It's a fight that we truly can't wait for. I'm going to... This, this fight is presented by Queensbury Promotions and Matchroom Boxing in association with AJ Boxing. And I'm going to start by bringing in Eddie Hearn, uh, Eddie, at the launch press conference, you talked about the roadmap for Anthony Joshua. The next stop on that roadmap is Otto Valin. How do you feel about this fight? Six weeks' notice, tall southpaw. What do you think? Yeah, thanks, Dev. I mean, firstly, it's three great heavyweight fights. Um, I can't wait for Big Baby against definitely my new favourite heavyweight after that war cry in Daniel Dubois. It's a great fight and uh, a real 50-50 fight. And 
this man to my right beyond AJ and Joseph Parker means business. He's got a tremendous team, great people. Andy Lee, one of the best trainers in the sport. And that's a very tough fight for Deontay Wilder, who is one of the most exciting heavyweights on the planet. For AJ, um, the run has been incredible. The journey has been incredible from winning Olympic gold, from winning the World Heavyweight Championship in his 16th fight, the run that he's been on. You know, Dominic Brazil, Eric Molina, Vladimir Klitschko, Carlos Takam unifying against Joseph Parker in a great fight as well. Alexander Povetkin, Andy Ruiz, Andy Ruiz, Kubrat Pulev, Alexander Usyk, Alexander Usyk, Jermaine Franklin, Robert Hellenius, and now Otto Wallin. This is his third fight in 2023. It's the first time he's been able to be active without the politics of a belt. And it's a real test. You know, Otto Wallin is a guy that I remember seeing in Sheffield many years ago. Um... Many people feel like he was unlucky not to force a stoppage against Tyson Fury. He's coming off a great win against Murat Gassiev. And I love his confidence. I think he truly believes he will win the fight on Saturday. We've got other plans, but we also know when you talk about a roadmap, the most dangerous thing is to not look straight in front of you. And uh, I see a very motivated Anthony Joshua. Um, You know, I see a guy that has really, in my opinion, been responsible for the growth of the heavyweight division. Going back to... Filling stadiums, coming off the world championship victory after winning Olympic gold, and a guy that has plenty more left to give to the heavyweight division. Wants to become a three time world heavyweight champion, but has a real tough task ahead of him on Saturday night. Great link up with Ben Davison. I think you're going to see a stunning performance from Anthony on Saturday. I've got to just bring you up on this one. There, uh, there's been a lot of talks, a lot of reports out there about the next fight already being signed, but that's not the case, Eddie. No, not at all. You know, I mean, look, we. Anthony wants the biggest fights in boxing. His resume proves that. He has the best resume in the heavyweight division. We've wanted to fight Deontay Wilder for a long time. But the only thing that matters is Saturday night. You know, um, I, I, I worry for Deontay Wilder in the fight. And anything can happen in our fight as well. But nothing agreed. You know, His Excellency has a vision for boxing in Saudi Arabia. He wants to bring the biggest fights. For me, that is the biggest fight in boxing. But nothing agreed and all irrelevant until Saturday night is finished. Thank you, Eddie. Before we bring in the fighters, let's just bring in Frank Warren here again. uh, Frank, this is a tremendous co-main event fight here. Anthony Joshua, Otto Valin, so much on the line for both guys, really. Um, Give us your thoughts heading into it. It's a very, you say, it's a very, very interesting fight. Um, AJ, uh, Eddie just said he's had a couple of fights this year and this will be his third one. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's been the toughest one for him. He's got an opponent who's really up for the job. He's only uh, lost one fight. That was against Tyson. That was a, quite a few years ago. And as I mentioned earlier, he's coming off of an impressive win against Gassiev. He, he genuinely, I've spoken to him, he genuinely thinks, thinks he can win this auto. And AJ can't afford to lose it. He wants to stay at the top of the, on the top table. This is fights that he's got to win. And he's got to win them in style. It's going to be an exciting fight. There's no doubt about that. I think it will be exciting. Um, and you've got eight fights on this card, eight quality fights. There will be an upset somewhere. The odds must. The odds will obviously uh, prove that. There will definitely be an upset. So who's it going to be? Because these guys, all these are guys, all the opponents, all the fellas who are coming here class as opponents, they're coming to win. They're not just coming to make up the numbers. They're coming to win these fights. And I think um, AJ will have his hands full. I think it's be a tough fight. And we're going to see what the future brings for him. He knows what he's got to do to win. He knows what, what, what state here. Yeah, he probably knows better than me or anybody. And he can't afford to slip up. And as I've just said, Otto is a massive chance, massive opportunity to him. The same as it is for Joseph Parker against Deontay. Now, these are good quality fights. There's jeopardy in these fights. There is real jeopardy in them. So we'll see. Saturday night is going to be one hell of a card. There's no doubt about it. Thank you very much, Frank. Let's bring in Otto Valin. Um, Otto, you've been very vocal in the build-up to this fight. I think you've surprised people by some of the things that you have said. Now that it's getting closer, now that it's just hours away, are you getting nervous? How are you feeling? Of course I'm nervous, but I just want to say thank you for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Frank Warren for making this happen. But yes, of course I'm nervous. It's a big fight, big opportunity, but I'm ready for it. I worked very hard to be here 
And uh, now it's just time to enjoy the moment, win the fight, and move on. But, you know, uh, people talking about upsets, but I I'm going to win the fight, and you shouldn't call it an upset. It's, it's not really an upset. It's just natural. It's, this is my time, so I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm really happy to be here. There's been a lot of talk from yourself about the mental side of things. Do you feel like you have the mental edge heading into Saturday? I don't know. I'm just trying to be myself. People say I talk a lot now, but I mean, I get questions. I just answer them with what I feel, right? And uh, that's, that's just, I'm not trying to make anything up. It's just the truth. So if, if people like it, fine. If they don't, then that's okay too. You, you actually said that if, uh, if you were Anthony Joshua, you wouldn't have taken this fight. You wouldn't have chosen to fight Otto Valin. Why is that? Why are you such a problem? Because I have a lot of secrets. I can't tell them right now. <laughs> Can you at least give us a hint? Anything, Otto? Give me something. No, but okay, if you, if you really want to know, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a tricky southpaw. I'm a good fighter. It's kind of a short notice to this fight. And also, he's got a new trainer. So, I think that's... Uh, you know, that can be tricky. There's a little bit of history there. There's some amateur fights that you've had. There's uh, plenty of rounds sparring as well. And you said that he's a different guy to what you remember. How has Anthony Joshua changed from the man that you used to know? Well, I only know him outside of the ring, really. I mean, inside the ring too, but not in a fight like this. And my sense now is, I mean, he used to be a happy guy, but I don't know. From, from what I see, he seems very stiff and tense. But uh, I don't know, maybe he's, he's uh, fed up with all this stuff. I think you might be right. Um, and also, let me just ask you this. I watched an interview the, the other day with Anthony where he said that there will be blood and bruises on Saturday night. Are you ready for that? Yeah, look at the Fury fight. You see a lot of blood and a lot of bruises. Thank you, Otto Valin. Well, I'm going to defer to Eddie Hearn here, who has a few questions for the former unified world heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Eddie, over to you. Thanks, Dev. Thank you, Otto, as well. Looking forward to a great fight. Um, just to finish on um, this incredible card, and again, thanks to all the promoters and, and Frank Warren of Queensbury yourself, Dev, and, and His Excellency for the vision. Um, as I said, four years ago, this journey started in Saudi Arabia with Anthony Joshua and he rematched Andy Ruiz here in Riyadh and the development in this city, the development in the country, not just as a destination for world-class sport has been incredible. And uh, this man to my right has been around a long time. He's seen it. He's done it all. Um, I think when you talk about his demeanor this week, just another fight for him. He's done this many, many times all around the world. And uh, just to close with the main event, the star of the show, AJ, ready to fight. On Saturday night, not too many words, but I know you're looking to do a demolition job on this man come the weekend. Yeah, 100%. Um, thanks everyone for turning up today. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, I'm looking to do a good job. What more can I say? I will do a good job. The uh, analysis of you comes with a territory. Oh, Every yeah. line that comes out your mouth, someone said, he looks tense, and I've never actually seen you more relaxed. I'm here to fight. I'm not here to party and get caught up in the glitz and glam. I want to fight. I want to perform well. Put that pressure on myself. Of course I'm tense because I want to perform, I want to win. I've got that urge to win and I want to hurt my opponent as well. Everybody talking about the bigger fights, I know the focus is Saturday, but so refreshing to Pure have a man focus. talking Pure focus talk on Saturday. and making sure you're focused. He's making yeah. sure you're dialed in yeah. for Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. Pure focus on Saturday. That's where my heart, my soul, every cell in my body is uh, fully focused towards Otto Wallen and doing what I know I can do. And finally, live on the zone pay-per-view around the world at the weekend. Just yeah. a few words for the people of Saudi Arabia, His Excellency, the vision that they've had an incredible event. Big. And, big, and big. your third fight in Saudi Arabia. Well, third fight in Saudi Arabia, yeah. Big vision in Saudi Arabia. Um, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia welcome us all here, giving the people down there with uh, open arms. Much appreciated. I know how much they put into putting these shows on. I've never seen anything like this in my whole life. Phenomenal. Um, I sat down with His Excellency in Turkey and uh, he showed me his vision. And um, the last man standing will be on this table in the future for sure. I'm looking forward to be sitting here in the future as well. And um, yeah, the vision is big. The vision is big for sure. And I was just wondering as well, I know everyone's come out to see us. If there are, I know, I'm sure we've got a spare 10 minutes if anyone wants to ask any questions to the fighters up on the top table. They're more than welcome to fire away. Derek, how can I help you? I can't. What, what round am I knocking him out? Only God knows. Only God knows. 
Hold on, I want Eddie to ask me some questions. I didn't know he was taking the hosting job over. Let's go, let's go. I mean, let's go. I mean, you took the job from other guy. Ask me some questions, Eddie. Do, do, you know? I want to Go ahead, man. I don't know. You went a bit quiet earlier when Dubois stuck it on you. Too. Listen, <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I've never some, seen you lost for words, Listen, mate. I guess somebody told him his nursery rhymes last I'm night doing, I'm that doing, boy I'm doing came the ring. out firing this I like you. You're my friend, but I'm doing the ring walk with Daniel on Saturday. Oh, you are? The, I hear, Brits, no, the Brits listen, are coming. I hear you. Fish and chips going to get extra fried. Don't worry you about it. That, you say that every that. fight. It's getting yeah. boring now. Hey, Go on, Dubois. Listen, we're going to shave that toupee off his head, too. Don't worry, Eddie. Eddie should have an exhibition one of these days. It's all right. We'll see what your engine's like these days. Listen. On a, on a serious note, thank you very much to everybody. I, Wrapping I, up. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm happy for more questions. Dev, do you want let, to let, take let's, some questions? Let's, uh, let's get one question from uh, the man with his hand up and the microphone. Oh, we've got a mic now. Go on. Give, give us your question. I was asking to AJ, obviously, with all the heavyweights here, talks about wild uh, interactions with Millie. You say that you're focused. But is it hard to stay focused or do you find it easy with how long you've been in the game for? Well... For me personally, it's not hard to stay focused at all. I'm fully locked in. I made a commitment in my life to stay locked in. And my main focus is on Otto Wallen now. And I'm going to perform. I'm going to do my job. I can definitely window shop. I know where I'm going in my life. But I've also got to stay. This is the checkpoint. And if I don't get past this, there is no future. So I'm fully locked in to Otto Wallen and doing the job. Thank you very much, Anthony. I've been told to wrap up this press conference. I'm sorry, some press will sorry, get their attention uh, with Anthony, of course. Thank you to everyone you at much. this top table. Frank, just a final word from yourself. Uh, just a couple of words. Why should people buy this on Saturday night? Because it's historical. It's going to be a fantastic uh, boxing well, festival. Right. This is going to be something extra, extra special. Oh. And you're going to see the best fighting the best. And next year... The winners come through, they're going to be even in bigger fights. So tune in, watch it. Brilliant nights of boxing. Let's get some face-offs. Thank you so much. Stick around. on the floor.